Good morning, everyone, and welcome to A Little Coffee, Sunshine, and Hope. This is Naomi from Naomi Scrappy Retreat, and I thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on just a second. So, <sighs> I was in the bathroom the other day and noticed a couple cobwebs up at the ceiling because of having um, my foot in the boot, it's been harder to get things done. But it's funny because one day they were there and the next day they weren't. And then another day later, um, as I was up at the front door, there were some little teeny tiny cobwebs around the door. And I was like, well, that's odd. And it got me to thinking about, um, you know, how we can learn about God from a spider. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but I just want you to think about some things. And I was going to do this in three parts, but I'm actually going to do it all today. So um, as long as it's not too long, which I don't think it will be. But the first thing is, is that, you know, you can't physically see the spider, but you know it's there when all of a sudden there's a spider web that appears. And if I'm out in the garden or if I'm out in, in the woods or anything like that, usually if you see a spider web, you will see a spider or something caught. But in the house, because I take care of and try to keep clear cobwebs and things like that, I never see the spiders. So it's interesting that you can't physically see them, but then all of a sudden when the web appears, you know they're there. And it kind of reminds me of God. And as soon as I saw the first one and then the second one, that was a thought that came to me. You can't physically see God, but you know that he's there. Um, you know that he's there in the sunrises. You know that he's there in the sunsets. I feel him in the gentle breezes. I see him in the flowers that bloom. I see him in just creation around me. And we've talked about that before, about how it's sad that when people look at creation, when people look at the sunrise and the sunset, that they don't see God. And it's very sad. So let me know how you know, tell me down below in the description, how you know that God is here. The ways that you actually see God, whether it's phys through physical, whether it's through how your life is going, just let me know how you know that God is there, even though you can't physically see a person in front of you. Um, so right now there's a popular song out by Zach Williams called The Waymaker. And some of the, um, the, the chorus goes something about Waymaker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. And it just reminded me. So I think that Psalm is taken from that song is taken from Isaiah 42, 16, which says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known along unfamiliar paths. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough ways smooth. These are the things I will do and I will not forsake them. And then the other verse I wanted to share to go along with that, we are going to be going through a lot of scripture today. So just, um, did you hear the noise outside? Um, even early in the morning, it's still noisy out there. Um, so anyhow, Isaiah 40, 28 says, do you not know, have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. So I know that's a little odd. Like how, why did you think of that when you thought about the spiders and God? I really don't know. Except for that spiders, again, they are not there. And then all of a sudden they make a way. They create these beautiful um, webs and it's just amazing the areas in which they can create them. And it reminded me that God makes a way when things seem impossible, when things seem like, well, impossible. When you were like, how in the world is that going to work out? God makes a way. And so that's one of the reasons why that brought to me, I believe, the Waymaker song by Zach Williams and then <clears throat> Isaiah 42, 16. The second thing I thought of was that, 
you know, we have, both of them are magnificent creators and it's hard to compare a spider to God, but I want you to think about what a web looks like and how intricate the design is, how delicate the design is. I have in the past seen spiders dangling and I'm like, why are they doing that? And when you see the web later, there's these more intricate designs. They're able to swing and to make these intricate designs in such a delicate way. I mean, I can't do anything like that. I cannot take something so delicate and dainty and make it into something beautiful. Um, there are people who can, but I can't. I'm a little clumsy. Um, so then I, when I thought about that, I thought about how God is just this amazing creator. He just um, has created the world for us. And you look again at the sunrises and the sunsets and they're never the same. You look at the intricate designs of a flower, you see the different colors and, uh, you know, the variation, the, even how they're made, the small ones, the larger ones, the teeny tiny minuscule ones that if you look closely in the grass, you can see these little teeny tiny flowers. And so it just, again, that reminded me of God. And there are a couple of other scriptures I wanted to share in relationship to that let me just find them i tried to mark them this time so i'm not fumbling through my bible like i have been in the past um let's see uh, jeremiah 32 17 says you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm nothing is too hard for you and i thought about that scripture and i thought you know i I don't think a spider looks at where he's going to make a web and thinks that's going to be too difficult. He just does it. And that's how God is. God didn't look and say, well, that's going to be difficult. He didn't look at creation and say, well, they're going to be too difficult. Um, let's just not make them. Um, he made them because he wanted to love us and he made them because he loves us. And so um, nothing was too hard for him and nothing still is too hard for him. Let's see. Psalms. 37, oops, Psalm 33, 6 says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made their starry host by the breath of his mouth. And the reason I thought of that verse was because of the starry heavens. If you look into the sky at night, you see all of these um, amazing constellations and stars. And if I was doing some research online the other day and was looking at nebulas and just how beautiful they are. And it's interesting because some of them remind me of eyes and it just reminds me of the verse that says, um, God is watching us, you know, and his eyes roam to and fro. And I just thought how beautiful and wonderful and majestic and intricate are those nebulas, are those constellations, you know, we didn't make them, God made them. And there are amazing creations by man, but nothing compares to the majesty, the intricacy, the delicacy that is creation, including human beings. Um, I think there's a verse in the New Testament. Let me just see if I can find it. It's Ephesians 2.10, which says, For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Just again, another reminder that, um, God created us and, um, we are a magnificent creation because he made us. So don't forget that just as a reminder, don't forget that. And then the last, um, the last part that I was going to do, or the last thing I was thinking about is just his care and compassion. And you're like, well, what are you, what are you talking about? Like his care and compassion? Well, yeah. I mean, a spider weaves again with delicacy. He does a careful planning. If you look at a couple of spider webs, they're not necessarily all the same. When you think about God's creation and God's people, they're not the same. Like you can have two trees side by side and they may be both apple trees, but they're not going to be made the same. You can have two human beings side by side. And they may be of the same race. They may be from the same family, but they're not the same. You look at snowflakes and scientists have said they have not seen any two 
snowflakes that are identical. And so I just, you know, I just think about how, you know, God's compassion and love for us knows no end. You know, he carefully planned us. He carefully planned for us. And then he sent his son. And that was also careful planning. And he did that for our salvation. But I want to look at, you know, the thought that God put into when he made us. So let's look at a couple verses. Let's, since we're in the New Testament, let's stay in the New Testament and then we'll go backwards. So Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says, and I just want you to think about this in relationship to where you are in life. Um, maybe you're struggling, maybe, you know, things aren't going well. I know COVID has hit and um, things are not what they used to be. And so I just want you to think about, and um, I just want you to think about this and know that um, God is looking out for you and God is watching over you. And yeah, maybe you've had some loss. Um, God wants you to see that he's still there and he still loves you. Um, in the end, he's still in control. And so let's, let's look at Matthew 6, 25. We're actually going to read um, several verses just because how this all correlates Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. If is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And I want to stop right there for a second and just, I want to pause on that because worry and fear, which I've talked about in the past, take away so much of your life. Not only those hours spent worrying, but also the effect that it has on your body. Worry can cause so much destruction for the body worry worry just causes it it brings toxins into the body which attack the body and so i want you to think about that if you start worrying about something look at how maybe you've been worrying about something for the last day i want you to think about what your body's doing maybe you've had headaches maybe you have had an upset stomach maybe um you haven't been able to focus mentally and see things with clarity so I want you to think about that the next time that you start to worry and then refocus that, as I mentioned previously, um, onto God and just remember that he's got you, that he's the one who's in control. And yeah, things may not turn out exactly how we want them, but in the end, he's the one who has control. And for them, those that love him and follow according to him, they're the ones who are going to have the victory and they're the ones who are going to be with him in heaven. So I just, I want you to remember that the end goal is heaven and that he is the one who's in control. So it also says, and why do you worry about clothes? See the lilies of the field and how they grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these, which brings me back to the point where I said, you know, man can make so many amazing things, but nothing compares to what you see in creation. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For, for the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has trouble enough of its own. And then let's go ahead and look in the Old Testament. There's just a couple more scriptures, and then we will go ahead and wrap up. There was, there was a lot of scripture for today. And like I said, I was originally going to put it into three parts. And then I decided not to. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and do it all together. So Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. 
You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with your whole heart, I will be found in you. And the last one, I think a lot of people, um, well, and maybe not, but this is, there's, I have several favorite verses and this is one of them just because it reminds me, um, not only that God is my creator, but that he made me, he made me on purpose the way I am. So if there's something about me that I'm not necessarily crazy about, um, if it's a physical attribute that God has made me. And so I need to look at the way God made me and I need to look at the way that God made the world and remember that, that he thought I was wonderful and that's why he made me. So I kind of was a little disjointed, but let's go ahead and read Psalm 139, 17. Um, it wasn't 17 and 18. Oh my goodness. 13 and 14. It says, for you created me. Let me try that again. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. That's the end of the scriptures. There are so many other scriptures that I have wrote down that I wanted to read. And I just, I wanted to keep this, I wanted to compact this all and keep this as short as possible. But I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear um, your thoughts on, you know, again, this was a crazy... I've been kind of going that way. Things remind me of God. And so I just wanted to share that. And again, I saw this spider's web and it reminded me of three things. For one, you cannot see a spider, but it's there when you see the web. And the same thing with God. You can't see him, but he's there. You can see him in the sunrise, the sunsets, the breezes, people around you, just different things. If you look, you will see him. And that's the key. If you look. You also have to be open. So the other part of that was that he's just a, ma a magnificent creator. He's intricate in his details, his designs. And then the last thing was that he has care and compassion. He made us. He's asked us to not worry. He's asked us to trust in him. And he made you fearfully and wonderfully made. So as you go through today and as you go through this weekend, I just want you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made the spiders. God made you. God made the lilies of the field and takes care of them. He takes care of the birds of the air and he made you. And if he can take care of them as much as he does, he will take care of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that you are blessed today and are a blessing to someone else. Until next time, have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for joining.